So please try this question before moving forward. It turns out that to solve this question, we have to draw two separate free body diagrams, one for the penguin alone, and then the other for the penguin and sled combined. So let's do the penguin by itself first. So when the object is the penguin only, we have the weight of the penguin acting downward, the normal force acting upward, and then a static frictional force propelling the penguin to the right. More specifically, it's the static frictional force between the penguin and the sled itself. Next, we have the free body diagram for the penguin plus sled, and most of the forces are quite similar. We have the weight of the penguin and sled acting downward. We've labeled that weight total because we're actually combining the weight of the penguin and sled together. We have a normal force pressing or pushing upward on these objects. We have the force that's being applied to propel the penguin and sled together to the right, and then there's a kinetic friction that's pointing in the opposite direction to the left. It's kinetic friction because the sled is sliding along the snow. Now in both free body diagrams, the objects are accelerating, so we can apply Newton's second law to both. Let's begin with the penguin only diagram. Here we have the sum of the forces equaling mass times acceleration, Newton's second law. Hopefully it's pretty clear that the penguin is accelerating only in the x direction, so we can actually put x subscripts here if we wish. Now in the x direction, there is only one force acting. It is the static frictional force. So we can plug that in for the, for the net force in the x direction. Now let's recall that a static frictional force can be substituted with the expression mu s, which is the coefficient of static friction, times the normal force. The coefficient of static friction between the penguin and the sled was stated in the question as 0.7. So we'll need that in just a moment. The normal force is actually going to equal the magnitude of the weight of the penguin. We realize that because there's no acceleration in the y direction, these two forces, the normal force and the weight of the penguin, must be balanced. They must be equal in magnitude. So we can actually replace that normal force with the weight of the penguin. Now, of course, the weight of the penguin is simply given by the expression mg. So let's replace the weight with mg. Now we can divide both sides of this equation by mass to cancel it out, and then we can see that the acceleration in the x direction of the penguin is simply the product of mu s and g. So let's calculate that acceleration. So we plug in the known values, and the acceleration turns out to be 6.86 meters per second squared. Now that acceleration not only applies to the first free body diagram, but it's going to apply to the second free body diagram. So let's bring that free body diagram back into the picture. Now, once again, in this free body diagram, the objects will be accelerating in the x direction to the right. There is no acceleration in the y direction. So we can write down Newton's second law specifically in the x direction. The two forces acting in the x direction are this pulling force and the kinetic frictional force. Notice the kinetic frictional force is pointing to the left, so that force will have a negative sign applied to it. This force is pointing to the right, so it will have a positive sign. Let's fill those in for the net force. The kinetic frictional force can be replaced by the expression mu k, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction, times the normal force, which is labeled N2 in our diagram. So let's make that replacement. Let's notice again that the normal force is going to be equal in magnitude to the total weight of the penguin and sled. There is no acceleration in the y direction, so those two forces, the normal force and the total weight, will be in balance. Their magnitudes will be equal. So let's replace the normal force, N2, here with the total weight of the penguin and sled. We could call the weight of the penguin WP and the weight of the sled WS. The only tricky point at this part of the problem is to find the mass of the penguin plus sled combined together. We know their weights because those were given. The penguin was 70 newtons and the sled was 60 newtons. So of course together they're 130 newtons. And to find the mass, we recall that mass is simply equal to the weight divided by the gravitational constant. So for that, we can actually just calculate the mass as 130 newtons as the combined weight of the penguin and sled and the gravitational constant. So this will be the expression that we can use for mass. We're going to be plugging that in over here. So now everything can be plugged in and we can solve for f. Notice for the acceleration, we have used the value that we calculated earlier for the acceleration of the penguin alone. But because the penguin and sled are accelerating together, we can use that very same value. So the rest should be easy. We just use some simple algebra to solve for f, which turns out to be 
exactly 104 newtons. If you have any questions about that algebra, please let me know.